Today is August 4th, Saturday. It's early evening and we thought it'd be a nice time to uh, share an update of our portable coop. But before we do, we want to show some of our squash pumpkin varieties that uh, Lauren just picked yesterday. Uh, unfortunately, they were camouflaged in the garden and so these extra large uh, nook zooks uh, got away from us and uh, but we think we can grade them and turn them into something. Uh, before we take a look at the garden we wanted to share uh, some of the dahlias that have really bloomed very nicely. Uh, so nicely, in fact, they toppled over on us a couple of times just with the weight of the blossom. And uh, this one right here is one of the newer blossoms. And then there's just some uh, lavender there at the base of the, the dahlia. So back to our portable coop evolution. You remember the uh, favela yurt that we had over uh, among the trees, the small stand of trees on the other side by the by the bench. Um, everything has grown back, the ivy, um, and you can not even tell that the chickens had been there. Over here on our little picnic table, this is about three feet of our amaranth that collapsed in a rainstorm night before last. We're leaving it on the table to dry out. Um, on YouTube they show different recipes and techniques for using the leaves and the seeds. So the burgundy fuchsia uh, seed head that we see there, uh, we have to separate the seeds, the little black um, shiny brown seeds from the shaft, the purplish color. So let's just take a look at our garden here in the middle. And as you see, it definitely has grown over. There are baby carrots that are coming up and there is um, uh, some kale that has managed to survive. But the garden here is just, as you can see, somewhat anemic. The garden, our, our new garden that we showed you in our first and second installments of, of our portable chicken coop is doing quite well. The amaranth is now averaging about uh, between seven and nine feet tall. We thought it was really quite tall, but we've discovered that the Greek giant uh, amaranth, which this is the variety that we have, grows to a height of 27 feet. So ours is, despite the fact that some of it is 9 feet, 10 feet high, this is, it's still uh, smaller than uh, what sounds like grows in other gardens. Uh, the corn is uh, really ripening nicely. Dan and I had some the other night. It's um, very sweet. It's a combination of yellow and white kernels. And so uh, it's really nice to have and to see that it's done so well among the amaranth. Um, unfortunately, the squash beetles have uh, produced and multiplied over and over and somewhat decimated areas of the garden where we've had squash growing. But I think that's to be given. We don't use and we have never used any pesticides on our garden and so the only thing that we can do is uh, pick the leaves off by hand and make sure we don't leave them in the compost and throw them away. Uh, Lauren likes to put them in a bucket of soapy water to really uh, do them in. So. Um, we had intended to irrigate today, but the water was so low and from experience we know that when it's that low it takes too long for it to uh, water the entire garden. 
so things look a little uh, dry and you can see the amaranth is somewhat listing to the side. Well, let's go back over here to our portable yurt. Since we filmed uh, our second installment in, in June, we came across these, um, something called Hularoos. They're designed in Australia and manufactured, not too surprisingly, in China. We decided to buy four of them, and they're approximately 11 and a half uh, feet on each side. We have one on either side, on the east and west side, and then we have two on top. The Coolaroos are designed, they're shade sails, they're designed to cut 90% of the UV rays, and we really want to take good care of the fragile complexions of our hens, and so they're quite happy with the shade. You can see that we um, uh, just moved the chicken coop today, which entails taking out the um, stainless steel uh, cages that we had used when they were pullets and hosing them down uh, to just clean off a week's debris. And they have their little um, structures there on the side so they can perch. Uh, they, they seem to prefer the, um, the cages to perch on top of those at night. Uh, they really like this new location, which is um, butting against uh, one end of, of the garden. So they were earlier picking off the the grass uh, feed pods that were dangling into their uh, chicken coop area. We've moved the chicken coop approximately 10 times. And if we just take a look right over here in front of the green chairs over there, you can see that uh, there is really no trace of where the chickens had been. In fact, what we're finding out is that um, the um, grass is uh, fertilized uh, each time we move. But what we can um, see uh, where they were most recently is uh, right over here to the west of the coop. And you can see how the, the grass, it looks like it's been actually mowed down. Uh, that's just where the, the coop had been and what the chickens, uh, how the chickens leave it after one week of residing in, in that particular area. So this is working out very well. Each week they have a clean, fresh batch of grass. And all we have to do is take everything out and then kind of with a pull, push, um, motion, we're able to uh, move it to uh, the new location. What you see right here are the chickens drinking water from their little gerbil hamster rabbit water bottles. And we are finding, especially with the heat that we've been having, uh, we really need to replenish them about every day. So each holds a quart, so they have about a gallon of fresh water. Looks like we've dam filled them up this morning and it looks like they're about mm, a quarter of a way down on each of them. So um, that's what our little chickens look like. And let's just take a look around just so you can see the cooler roos um, from a different angle. We'll go over here and you can see the nice uh, 11 and a half foot angle that we have. It's just, uh, obviously a triangular shape and uh, the chickens seem to really like it. We've had a couple of downpours since we installed the um, sunshade sails and uh, I think it's given them some protection from the rain. Uh, we'll have to see. We haven't made any plans to provide any other uh, protection from the elements. We're hoping that they can, as it were, weather the storm and, and as the temperatures begin to cool off now in September. Um, 
So that's about it. Let's just take a look at the apple tree real quickly. Uh, you can see that apples have started to fall and ripen. Lauren picked about mm, uh, four of our pears yesterday and they look really good. We actually haven't tried them, so I can't tell you what they taste like. But uh, the tree has, over the years, the many years, has not really grown much larger than what you see today. So that's about it. And so we'll say goodbye.